This is the Truth Network. Welcome to Running With Horses, a podcast devoted to inspire you concerning a relationship with Almighty God that empowers you to accomplish things you never thought possible. Shirley Weaver wants to take you there. And now, here's today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Glad you're here with us today as we're talking about the October 7 attacks on Israel, beginning October 7 and continuing, really. We're looking for a scriptural background because we need to understand God's idea, His plan, His strategy helps us to pray. We also discern something about the near future because we have laid out for us in verses throughout the Bible, really about at least a fourth of the Bible concerns end time events and the things that will take place. So many of those prophecies have not been fulfilled. In the last episode, we looked at Psalm 83. I want to pick up there, elaborate a little more, but also Jeremiah 49 and Isaiah 17. Again, there's a body of information We don't have to be completely, perfectly right here about our interpretation of what is what, but it lays out an understanding of what's in the heart of God. These prophecies are unfulfilled, and since we are living in the end times, it makes all the sense in the world to expect that they could be fulfilled now in our own lifetime. So... Before we get to Psalm 83 again, look at Jeremiah 49. Uh, Iran, which in the Bible is Elam, E-L-A-M, the modern nation today, Iran, in the Bible, Elam, is mentioned in Bible prophecies multiple times saying that God will break Iran and send its inhabitants out into the whole world. That's Jeremiah 49, verses 35 and 36. Let me read that. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I am going to break the bow of Elam, the finest of their might. I will bring upon Elam the four winds from the four winds of heaven and will scatter them to all these winds. And there will be no nation to which the outcast of Elam will not go. And another prophecy from the same Jeremiah chapter tells us that the Lord will establish his throne Get this, in Iran, in modern-day Iran, verse 38 of chapter 49 in Jeremiah. Then I will set my throne in Elam and destroy out of it kings and princes, declares the Lord. So that verse 38 tells us that the Lord intends to plant himself in Iran, in modern Iran, and he will be worshipped there. Despite everything we know about that evil regime, currently currently that evil regime, according to Bible prophecy, nothing can stop the Lord and his church from an increasing reach and influence. Besides this and other future events, we're discussing these unfulfilled prophecies so that we know what the mind of the Lord is. Like the Jeremiah 49 war we just mentioned, and another one, Isaiah 17, is a prophecy against Damascus. Damascus is a, the most ancient city 
of all. Damascus is in Syria, and in chapter 17 of Isaiah verse 1, reads this way, a prophecy against Damascus. Here's the quote. See, Damascus will no longer be a city, but will become a heap of ruin. You see, this is in God's heart. There's a plan in his heart. He has purposes. Is he doing something destructive to his creation? Of course not. Every human being on the face of the planet is loved by Almighty God. He created them to be in his own image. He loves them with um, uh, with the, the, the kind of love we can't even comprehend. So that's not the issue at all, okay? God is working behind the scenes because Satan has set up his throne in the hearts of many of these same individuals that God created with a destiny and a purpose for his glory, but the enemy has usurped that plan. So we have what we're dealing with here not right now, man's inhumanity to man. So in Psalm 83, we'll pick back up there from our last episode, Psalm 83, written, Asaph is writing here, the worship leader in David's administration, but also a prophet. So he's prophesying a future conflict. Hamas, a militant Islamic jihad organization, now established, rooted ingrained in Gaza and Hezbollah in southern Libya, excuse me, southern Lebanon and others like the Houthis that are basically tribal groups in Yemen. All of their aim is to govern in areas against what they view like all of these All of these radical groups believe that they have a righteous cause against an imperialist movement um, like the United States, like Israel, like Saudi Arabia, like the United Kingdom. So see, in their mind, this is a religious conviction that they are fighting a righteous cause and that there are no rules. There are no rules because hatred has taken over. You know where hatred rules? There is no other rule. Hatred is the rule. So these are various radical, Iranian-backed, Islamic, primarily Shia, militias. And these prophecies tell us that Israel will be forced to fight in earlier wars against their immediate neighbors. By earlier wars, I mean prior to the Gog-Magog conflict that we read about in Ezekiel 38 and 39. So not to get down in the weeds, but just for some clarification here, Some ancient names of the players in Psalm 83, these are countries and terrorist populations that surround Israel, and they threaten Israel night and day. You know that. I don't have to tell you that. Beginning with the tents of Edom in verse 3 of Psalm 83, tents means refugee. It means a military encampment. Edom means Edom. (laughs) It means the descendants of Edom. So they're Edomites. Many Palestinians are descendants. They are Edomites. Verses 3 and 4, with cunning they conspire. So this is a confederacy, see, a coming together of these groups and these entities from that inner circle that surrounds Israel right now. Some refer it refer to this inner circle as a ring of fire, specifically an Iranian-backed 
ring of fire. So these are the proxies, but Iran is the puppeteer. Very important. Very important to remember. Now, drop down to verse 6, verses 6 through 8, and verse 12 in, the, in Psalm 83. Tyre to the north of Israel, the inhabitants of Tyre. This would be Hezbollah in Syria and Lebanon. Right now, the potential is they could lob as many as 2,000 missiles a day into Israel, into the Golan Heights, and further, possibly pulling in to this confederacy before things are over, before this is over, groups from Jordan, we've already said Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, we've already said, and Philistia is Gaza. Philistia is Gaza. So the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, have been preparing for a very long time for such an onslaught. You see, verses 3 and 4 warn, with cunning they conspire against the people that God cherishes. Israel is the apple of his eye. A little more specifically, verses 5 through 10 in in Psalm 83, with one mind they plot together. They form an alliance against who? Against God. You see, Israel represents God. It's the Israel is the apple of his eye. And so the haters of Israel are really inspired by Satan, who is a hater of Almighty God. The human beings under the jurisdiction of Satan, through the force of Hatan, they are just being manipulated. I mean, my heart goes out, particularly to well, my heart goes out to the mothers throughout this part of the world whose sons and daughters have been taught to hate. Hatred is a force. It's a blood thirst. And, you know, I really believe that the whole world needs to rise up right now and say something really strong in support of Israel against this murder and this mayhem and the massacre that is taking place. Again, verse 6 in, in Psalm 83, the tents, that is the dwelling place, like the tents of the nomads in the desert of Edom, those are the descendants of Edom, and the Ishmaelites, the descendants of Ishmael, and of Moab, descendants of Ishmael, and the Hagrites, descendants of Lot by his eldest daughter. Verse 7, Biblios, which is Gibal, a region in Adumea, and Ammon, also a region in Adumea, and Amalek, these are the Ammonites descended from Ammon, and as I said, Philistia, this is the west coast of Canaan, the Palestinian, quote, the Palestinian people, now, currently concentrated in Gaza, this is a, this is, this is history here. With it goes on to say, this is verse seven, with the people that means the inhabitants, and this word inhabitants means to sit down and dwell of Tyre. We've already said Tyre to the north of Israel means rock. It's a Phoenician city on the Mediterranean coast. And then verse 8, even Assyria, that is Asher, the second son of, of Shem, ancestor of the Assyrians, has joined, has joined themselves to all of this confederacy to these are Lot's descendants reinforcing this confederacy. And then, then Asaph said something that is critical for us to hear and to understand, to look at and to consider as to whether it applies to the situation right now. 
Asaph prophesied this way, Do to them as you did to Midian, the reference here is to Gideon, and as you did to Sisera, excuse me, Sisera and Jabin at the river Kishon. Remember, that's the story of Deborah who judged Israel and her general, Barak, who perished at Endor. The outcome of both of these battles that resulted from the harassment and the torment of God's people, in the case of Gideon, I believe it was like five or six years, seven years maybe, in the case of Deborah and Sisera, (laughs) it was 20 years. So what was the result? God initiated a response that completely wiped the enemy, removed that threat once and for all. So this is why I say, very possibly, Psalm 83 describes an important war event that is scheduled for end-time fulfillment, and end-time means now, because anything following the establishment of Israel as a nation in 1948, we are in the end times. That's the marker. That's the line of demarcation. This is the time marked for the return to the land of the Jewish people. This event that's unfolding now, as we said, possibly is Psalm 83. There are others that could apply. Jeremiah 49, Isaiah 17. All of it is part of the setup, part of the lead up to the war of Gog and Magog, which is laid out in Ezekiel 38. But the outcome prophesied within these prophecies is my focus. And if it is, if this connection is correct, (laughs) this is how we pray. We pray that God will wipe out the source. And this doesn't seem possible. I get it. I get it. I understand. It doesn't seem possible, but that God has set in motion something wherein he will initiate, oversee, and administrate the complete removal of these terrorists there on the east coast of Canaan, Hamas, north of the Golan, Hezbollah, and any other radical force that joins that confederacy. Again, Psalm 83, verse 9. Do to them as you did to Midian, as you did to Sisera and Jabin at the river Kishon who perished at Endor. Our prayer is for all the will of God, for the mercy of God to prevail among the innocents, those who have no choice but have been trapped in a conflict that they are innocent of participating in but are subjected to anyway. War is difficult. War is cruel. But if God has set this in motion, his heart is watching out. You know, his eye is on the sparrow. And he careth. He careth. He careth. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that your will prevail and that Israel prosper and be blessed. And God, we do say that we bless Israel, stand with Israel, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and God, we love 
the Jewish people. Amen and amen. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support this podcast, please share it with others. Post about it on social media or leave a rating and review. Don't forget to check out the show notes or visit acleartrumpet.org where you can subscribe to Shirley's email list. Download the ministry app and purchase your very own copy of Shirley's 365-day devotional, Running With Horses. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.